Hey everyone, welcome back to the range. My name is Matt, the king of armor destruction, and you guessed it, that's why you're here, because we've got an armor test today from Tactical X-Men. This is their universal level three silicon carbide ultra high molecular weight polyethylene 10 by 12 plate. We're gonna have some fun today, folks. In full transparency, Tactical X-Men sent us these pair of 10 by 12 plates for us to destroy with no strings attached. This guy is 830 thousandths thick and it's approximately four pounds, seven ounces. They list it as multi-curve, but it's more of a single curve from what I can tell. Normally with the multi-curve, you've got more bends in it. And to me, it looks like single curve. There is no strike face foam protectant on here. It is also a reduced strike face. I can feel the foam ring on there. So we'll make sure when we're shooting that we're maintaining a good edge to, or shot to edge distance there so we're not going to just shoot the polyethylene. As always, for any of our armor testing, we stick at 45 feet, which is the official NIJ testing distance. Because of course, if you go longer, if it defeats it at 45 feet and you go longer, it's gonna stop it. We use a client giant clay briefcase here as a compressible media. It is about 65 degrees outside today, so the clay is warm, but it's not close to the temperature you needed to certify it. So we're gonna see some back face, but we're probably not gonna see a true representation. I just like to have a giant, like this weighs like 80 pounds behind it. So the plate stays upright and at zero degrees to us as we're shooting it. Since this is ceramic armor, we go ahead and drop the plate two times on its face with a rig that I built per again NIJ standards. All right, folks, we've got our plate set up on our clay briefcase down there. We're gonna take some shots with 5.56 first before we move on to 308. Like I said, this is a level three plate that employs ceramic, in this case, silicon carbide. I'm not sure how thick those tiles or strike face may be until we do a tear apart. So some of these threats may be kind of redundant if you've been on my channel for a while, but if you haven't, it's a good baseline to see at what point some of these more advanced threats, it can actually stop. Our first threat is M193, then M855, then M855A1, which is the Army's new EPR round. We have a 22 inch TC compass. We have the Turbo 556 suppressor on there. Our third shot will be the A1. As I mentioned, this is a reduced strike face plate, meaning the plate is a 10 by 12 plate, but the actual ceramic only extends into the eight to eight by 10 ish area. On the third camera that I have facing on the plate, you can see that I've done with the white um, white out, I've outlined where the ceramic kind of stops on the plate. Didn't get a velocity reading off that. I think I just lost the chronograph. Thirty forty-five for the M855. And then I think I just heard it reconnect. Now our A1, I'll just read the numbers off to you guys just in case. 3200. Ooh-wee. I'll take a shot off camera with the M193 so we have a good velocity number for that. Uh-oh, casually folks, I've broken another set of straps. Kind of like Scott at Kentucky Ballistics. I really could use a rubber strap sponsor. Anyways, here is our M193. I will put an annotation on a follow-up shot what we got for velocity. Typically with the Independence M193, we see over 3,400 feet per second in the 22 inch. Here was our M855 and here was our A1. I can hear some crunchies in there. Place those bets in the comments below. Helps the YouTube a logarithm. Oh, no pass through folks. We have the biggest dimple there from the A1 but otherwise, no pass through. That's probably about 12 to 15 millimeters. This clay is like the NIJ clay, but I can't 
heat this up in an oven out here and keep it at a specified temperature because I run a few of these tests at the same time. So the temperature is going to cool down. I'm thinking about adding an oven out here and using some of the aroma clay and seeing how our results may differ with back face. But so far, very good results from this level three plate. It stopped very common and then somewhat uncommon, but becoming more common threat. All right, time for some 308 caliber test. We've got some M80 ball from Poon Sang or PMC. We've got the Army's current new issue EPR rounds, 130 grains, copper core, steel tip, kind of like M855A1, scaled up. And finally, we have P80 black tip from FN or Israeli manufacturer. This is kind of where the M2AP from 30-06 evolved into in 308. And then I think it was phased out then in favor for M993. I like to try to test the M80 ball against these level three plates, even though they're ceramic and I know it's not gonna stop it because this kind of gives us a good representation of what back face is gonna be because there's apparently different level quality levels of polyethylene and the lower ends will show more back face on our clay here. So this will give us a good representation. We've got our 22 inch TC compass, has the Phantom M2 on there. We'll load the black tip or the P80 black tip last, then the A1 and the two shots of M80 ball. Got a rotary magazine here. There we go. Come on. I'll put this right below the A1 shot. Nice. Then another M80 ball. Now our EPR round. I'm gonna put this right dead center in the plate. And our black tip. Four rounds, let's go see how many more rounds that plate's got left at it. Kind of a bad joke. Starting to see bits and pieces of that silicon carbide popping out all over our table here. I think I need a table sponsor too. Anyways, here is our armor. Let's see if I can zoom in just a little bit. I'm by myself, so I'm gonna pinch zoom this guy. All right, right here was our first M80 shot. Here was our second. Here was our EPR, M80A1, and here was our P80 black tip. We are more than two inches away from any subsequent shots that I would consider those a fair hit. What do you guys think? Uh oh Raggy. Ho, 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 ho. Look at those giant holes. Our EPR smoked right through there, as well as our P80 black tip. Now I mentioned that, that back face on those standard M80 ball rounds, and they are fairly small, not a lot. Little dimple there. It's kind of interesting that the A1 dimple collapsed when this hit it, but those actual, the, the armor piercing round broke right through that sucker. The EPR looks like it was going out on an angle. I guess that's good to know. Now this is the first time that I've tested Tactile X-Men's product, so I'm not sure how thick the strike face is, and I didn't ask them beforehand. So we always do a teardown now. I, I asked for feedback in the last couple of videos, and you all seem to like the teardown video. So we'll tear this down and see how thick this ceramic is, as long as I leave a good spot on there. But don't get hit with AP threats. There's another shot of those holes there. It has broken the backside of my wood so I'll have to replace that at some point with Bowser's. All right, I have one more threat. I do believe besides myself, going ballistic is the only other channel that's ever used M995 in a video. This is a 52 grain 
tungsten core projectile going very fast, you pretty much need a level four to ensure its stoppage. So I have our SBR right here, and we're gonna see what it will do against ceramic. I looked inside there, and it has a pretty thick ceramic strike face. We're gonna go for the lower right of the plate. That's the last solid part of the plate that I have, and we'll see what it's gonna do. These things are really expensive. I think they're almost $100 a piece right now. These came from one of our servicemen abroad. They sent me some when they came stateside and wanted us to have some fun with it. Hopefully we get a velocity off this guy. 2831. That's hot. Let's go see what we did. All right. Here was our shot from the M995 AP from the SBR. We are inside of our ceramic and far enough away from other shots that this should be a solid part of the plate there, although there's ceramic coming out of it now. Very interesting to know about this one. Ho! Uh-oh, Raggy. There is a pass through there. You can see the hole right there. It kind of came out on an angle, but silicon carbide, and again, whatever thickness this plate is, could not stop that from the SBR. All right, time for the teardown. You'll have to forgive me. I am doing this by myself right now, so I've got the camera on a tripod. So if anything seems out of place, it's just because I'm doing everything by myself. So here is our Tactical X-Men Universal Armor Silicone Carbide, Silicon Carbide Level 3. This does not want to come apart very easily, but you can see our ceramic tile array there. I will have to uh, get a measurement on that, but it looks pretty thick. You can see our foam ring right here extends a good, that's at least a half inch or more on the bottom of the plate. Same on the side, right where I cut that is where it stops. I gotta be careful I don't cut myself here. You can see the tiles do a pretty good job of, of localizing the trauma to the ceramic so that, you know, we had two good tiles down here that didn't get hit. Let's see if I can get to the poly, polyethylene back of here. So essentially, you may be hard to see, but there's how much of that is the tile in the ceramic and the outer is just PE. PE itself will stop M193, but not any of our AP threats. There's no foam that I can see anywhere on the plate. Hopefully I haven't cut myself. If there's any particular angles you guys wanna see when I do these teardown videos, please definitely leave me a comment below so we can make sure that we include the different angles here. But not much inside here besides ceramic and polyethylene. Here is a backside shot of the M80A1 that penetrated our P80 black tip. And that little bitty tiny hole down there is the M995. It was just going right through that. Nothing was gonna slow that sucker down. And there's just a basic layers there now that i have a mess gotta clean that up well folks i would say our tactical x-men level three plate is a solid plate when the nij releases the rf1 2 and 3 standards this will easily pass the rf2 standards now it does not have a foam strike face protectant which i would like to see added it's going to add a minimal amount of weight and thickness but that goes to help any of the wear and tear that you may see against the plate if you fall on it. I also would like to see them do a full coverage ceramic strike face, which is going to add weight, but it's only gonna help enhance the performance of our plate. This test goes to show that our M80A1 is still no joke. We stopped it in our level three LA police gear 
test, but I think the Illumina tends to show more resistance to being penetrated than say the silicon carbide or the boron. I think the boron and the silicon have the advantage of being more lightweight, but I don't think it's as tough as the Illumina is because we stopped the M80A1 in the LA police gear with the 22 inch barrel. Our M995, that was just kind of a what if because I don't think I've seen anybody shoot it from an SBR. So there's another first for me. As far as back face goes, we had pretty good back face representation from our 308 threats. I am not a replacement for any NIJ testing. I'm kind of the, hey, what is this plate gonna do kind of thing and you wanna see it to believe it. At the same time, the manufacturers, after seeing some of these tests that I do, because a lot of times they just send me the plates and I'm free to do with as I please, they should take this data and go and have an actual official NIJ lab test done on those threats so they can add those as a special threat rating. As we prepare to hit that dusty trail for this Sunday evening, I always take a moment at the end of our videos to thank all those who help make these possible. Number one is my Patreon supporters. Number two is my wife who's running the camera today and my child who's patiently waiting for us to leave. Number three is Tactical X-Men who again in full transparency sent us a pair of those level three plates for me to destroy as I please. And of course, you all for watching. Until next time, I'll catch you at the range.